So good evening everyone from Sydney and welcome to the second roundtable discussion session for 2021. I'm Dr. Ali Nassar, the board chairman and CEO for Stokos Australia. From Team Stokos, I'm joined today by Dr. Rana Abdelmalek, executive consultant. It is beyond a shadow of a doubt that the pandemic has imposed sudden changes on our lives and mode of operation. Once again, the traditional ways of operation proved to be not perfectly sufficient. Is that it? Can we do any better? Many questions asked. Some have answers and some still don't. But what we are certain of is that now we are bound to do things differently. It is time to think, to assess and evaluate. What kept us going? Is this adequate for the way going forward? Leadership post COVID-19 by our keynote speaker, Mr. Mariano Gonzalez, will address all this. Mr. Mariano Gonzalez is the co-founder and CEO of Monferrato Consulting Spain, a newly formed healthcare and human capital consultancy firm. Mr. Gonzalez also serves as a senior advisor to the board of directors of United Eastern Medical Services in the UAE. For the past 25 years, Mariano has assumed several senior executive roles in both the public and private healthcare sectors in the UAE and Europe, through which he has built an outstanding track record of achievements. Some of these senior executive positions include serving as a managing director, corporate chief operating officer, and chief executive officer. Mr. Gonzalez holds a master's degree in business administration from the University of Phoenix, Arizona, and a business management degree from the IE Business School. Mr. Gonzalez is a member of core healthcare management associations in Europe and the United States. Kindly note that Mr. Gonzalez is happy to take questions and discussion points throughout the session. Thank you for that, Mariano. To that, I kindly ask participants to use the raise hand option when you are ready to speak. Without further ado, and joined by you all, I welcome Mr. Mariano Gonzalez. Mariano, the stage is all yours. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Ali. So it's really a pleasure to be here to, with, with all of you. Um, some of you, we've been working together. Some, some of you, we, we, we know you were coming. And, and, and the first thing I need, I need to say is just a big thank you to Dr. Aline and her team for all the support to, to have me today here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for everyone making the time to, to, to be here today. And hopefully we can, we can open a discussion as you know, in, any time that you, that you think fit, yes, please feel free to to raise your hand, and, and we will we will take the question. Okay, if I if I can share some of my screens, just give me a second. Everyone seen the first slide of the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay. So, so the first thing I need to say is that the title. So, so my colleagues, they say, what, what is post-COVID-19? We're, we're still there. They say, yeah, you're right, but you need to be ready. So, so the, the situation that we've been facing for, you know, since last year, it was most of the people I've been talking to is, is, is a lifetime. Um, some of my former colleagues in the Middle East, they originally from from Iraq, and they say no. For me, it's not the first time. I, you know, had similar situations in my in my home country. But but I think for for most of us, everything has been changing. Everything has changed overnight, and 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 this is probably the the, the key factor of of what we, what have been facing 
uh, you know, all the leaders and all the organizations uh, for more than one year now. And, and also the uncertainty. So COVID-19 is a, is, a, is, a, is a Nobel virus that we didn't know the, 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 the sources, the, the behavior of the virus. So, so everyone was doing their best to manage from a healthcare perspective and from an organization, organizational perspective. Okay, some of them say that since World War II, uh, never happened something. Never, they never seen something similar. Okay, but the most important part for for leaders is not only the the healthcare impact of this situation, but also the economic, the marketplace. Everything collapsed, and that is what we've been facing for more than one year. Let me show you something. Let me see if this is gonna work. Yes. I don't know if, just one second. Just to return to the presentation and give you the, Right, some of you already watched this video. Hello, um, hi Jennifer. So, um, guys, no, I be quiet. Don't, don't get close. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so tonight is gonna be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So we're um, yeah, the dog is very crazy. Um, yeah, I actually mean. So, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's hard to multitask, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so um, it does going very well, well, and everything's going good. So, um, yeah, th yeah, hold one second. Guys, guys, you have to go upstairs and get ready. Sounds familiar. Very much. <laughs> okay, so the world is changing and we must change with it. Okay, later on, I will, I will show you the, the, one of the biggest news in the last two weeks. It's an announcement from, from uh, Google. Let me say, I think, I think I have the, I think I have here. You seen this? Yes. April 6, Google announced that remote working and working from home needs to be uh, approved by them. And, and, and the employees working from home, they need to live within commuting distance. Mm. Okay. In in my perspective, in my view, we thought, okay, this is this is new. We just need to adjust ourselves. Companies has been created to manage this situation of remote working from home. But still, the world is changing. So we have not have the time to adjust to the one of the most. Uh, evident factors that happened uh, because of the pandemic, which is maintain social distance, working from home, be safe there. Now that the situation is become okay, you know, with the with the vaccines, with all the uh, understanding of the virus and, and the new treatments, uh, we, we we cannot say that it's a it's a relaxation, but is you know the, the virus is a little bit more under control, but still you know. There are many, the, the, the figures from, from many countries are really scary, but, but Google is saying that you need to come back to the office. Yes, it's changing. What are we gonna do? So I found this picture on, on the internet, it's very nice. So there was temporary close and that had happened and it still is happening, okay? so. Corporate actions, uh, particularly in large sectors, and demand is reversed. So they have been, as you may 
have seen in different uh, organizations in different sectors that the, 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 they have been very agile in terms of reorganizing themselves, in terms of reacting to the market, in terms of reacting to the, to the new situation. Okay. But basically, there has been trigger words that are not new to us. Innovation. Actions by firms also support employment. We'll see later if that's true or not. Uh, what happened with the with the wages, with the payments, with the salaries? Recent study said that in the U.S., those individuals that are around the twenty thousand dollars per year are the ones suffering the most because of the crisis, economic crisis, as a consequence of the COVID nineteen pandemic. Those about sixty thousand dollars per year are even earning more than before. So this is really something that we need to think about. And it's true that the company has been investing more. It's true that the company has been taking care of their employees, taking care of their companies, reacting. You sure about that? Let's see. So these are some of the numbers. Of course, digitalization. We have been hearing digitalization right and left. The latest news in artificial intelligence is that it's becoming to an end. But we haven't started yet. And now there are sectors in the very high profile companies that they say that AI is really coming to, you know, not to an end, but to a to, to street without any, any possibility to go right or left. Why that is happening? Are there another priorities? to the organizations that to be on the forefront of the uh, innovation in technology and artificial intelligence. Okay. Most of the organization has gone through uh, reorganization to become more agile. More agile means basically in terms of the bottom line, in terms of the cost. If I ask you, what are you gonna do to reduce your cost? from today to tomorrow, what, what will be the answer? Probably the answer will be, okay, I will cut employees. I will cut salaries. That will be the easy answer. But that has been one of the most common answers. Okay, let's see. So after the pandemic, what, what are the sectors that has been creating, you know, more value in the market? Healthcare, constructions, information communication and telecommunication companies, retail, pharmaceuticals. This can give us an idea of not only the, the, the sectors and the companies that have been performing well, but also the companies and the sectors that will perform well in the future. But are those companies the companies that were performing well before the, the COVID started? What really happened is there has been a uh, distance, uh, a separation between the supply and the demand. The demand basically has changed dramatically and the supply was, was not there. It took some time to the organizations to cover that demand. Okay, The new demands in terms of healthcare, in terms of PPEs, in terms of new situation with the new requirements of the market in terms of working from home. You know, Deutsche Bank moved in weeks, 75,000 employees working full-time from home. That requires a big, big infrastructure. So that demand and supply is now adjusting themselves. But if we put this situation last year, it was one of the main, you know, challenges that we were, we were facing. This is more data that you will have in your presentation, but basically just to, to let you know that it, the, the breakdown in those companies in healthcare, for example, you know, the, the, the um, tele, telehealth. Telehealth with some organizations and hospitals, they reached to move the outpatient uh, consultation to 90% of teleconsultations. The estimation of that percentage 
in the future will be something between five and 10 percent. So those organizations that has been investing in telehealth, in video consultations, they will remain. The infrastructure will be there. But the estimations, even the trends is, is, is coming now to the 30, 35 percent of the consultations, when the patient has the choice to do it, will become to very close to the, let's say 10 percent. Okay. I think I think that is something that we we are seeing now in 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 those countries where the COVID is you know getting uh, in in a better in a better control. Okay. Health automation and technology reorganization and being more agile and shift to digital channels. Retail. That's why retail is so important. You know, but retail they already were then. They already were in the in the in the online business but that has created the middle point and the middle point is logistics what do you think is one of the main business of amazon logistics if you check top three companies growth most last year most probably will find amazon there okay. the estimations between what we were doing and what will happen our automation and technology, yes, we will increase definitely. Operational efficiencies, definitely we we, we, were, we were focused on that, but we will continue focusing on that. And, and there are other factors in terms of how we were doing in terms of net uh, contribution and post pandemic. Okay, the most important part is automation and technology, and reorganization and uh, agility. Okay. This reorganization agility is one of the focus that the leaders and the, and the top C's and D's will be paying attention. How we will do that is what I'm trying to explain in the next slides. Let me give you a couple of slides for free in terms of human capital. So the, the pressures of the pandemic forced many business to become more efficient than we, we have seen in, in the numbers. Human and physical capital accumulation are two of the crucial factors to drive the growth in productivity because we control the cost. But 60% of the productivity potential that we have calculated in, in, a, in, a, in a survey are coming for measures that will cut, cut cost in labor. So if you see that uh, there was a survey that was done last month, they asked several leaders in different countries, what was your, what is your main focus of, uh, what is your main challenge? What, did you, what are you worried about? Most of the countries, they said COVID-19 effects and post-COVID-19 effects. At the same time that they will say unemployment. At the same time that they were saying, upskill my employees to cope with the new trends, with the new demands. It's not just COVID. That, pro that was last year. This year, as the, the executive and the leaders, they are seeing a way out. In, they are putting time, they're putting the timing in terms of will be in September, will be at the end of, the, of this year, will be Q1 2022. Their main concern in countries like India, in continents like Europe, is the unemployment. Unemployment that we are creating. And we are reinforcing with the measures in order to become efficient and to, and to, and to go through the, the economic crisis that uh, the, the COVID-19 is, 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 is creating. But what are the alternatives? It's our responsibility to think on that. If you see what the big firms are doing, you take the top 10 big firms, the, the initiative that they are implementing because the, the capacity, the, the organization is bigger, is what they are doing 
in terms of going through the, the, the crisis. The problem is that small and medium companies are imitating that. That's why small and medium companies are failing. And that's why small and medium companies are closing down. Because of the economic crisis or because of the bad situation in, the, in, in, in bad times. We just need to think about it. So, the normalization of remote work that we have seen, the acceleration in the use of technology to manage employees. How, how many, I, I can ask you, give me two names of companies that now are monitoring the check-in and check-out, the punch-in and punch-out of the employees. Because most of them are working from home. How, how, how do we manage that? Or we need to change the performance of, and the way how we manage the performance and we measure the performance of those employees that are working in a different environment. Is that the reason why Google is not happy? It's not happy, probably it's not the right thing to say that. It's changing the trend now in terms of the, the physical place where the employees are going to work. Are we counting with expectations of the employees? Probably not. So here is, is, is also change that leaders needs to, needs to incorporate to their, to their actions, which is how to manage the situation, how to, be, how to lead with empathy, how to be more effective, how to build a fundamental relationship with the employees in a different way. Now you don't have around a table your employees. You have it anywhere, like we. I think we are now connected with 14 different countries. With, we don't know what you're doing. 16. You know? It is 16. 16. Okay. Two more. So, uh, but most companies don't have the scale to create a managerial class. They need managers to be both managers and doers. So after the COVID-19 recovery, which is the, 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 the haven't happened yet, so it's happening. So what we have seen is different factors, aspects that the company business are monitoring, which is remote from work, business trouble, use of office space, how company interact with your customers, with your customers building capacity, capabilities, uh, management of the employee supply chain management. If you think in these factors in your company, there's a complete and comprehensive report uh, done by my, McKinsey, analyzing how, how you were managing that before the COVID, how you've been doing, and what is your views for the future. And if you have seen, it's not that different. So the leaders are saying that they will be managing these factors with the same wave that they were managing before. I think that's a mistake. Probably the factors will be the same, probably the wave should be different. That's what one of the main uh, lines that I want to offer to you is <clears throat> factors could be the same, the wave in terms of importance, in terms of relevance, to cope in the next, with the next two to three years, it's different. Where the wave is gonna come from, from the market, a lot of information available, from your employees and from your own company, okay? All this are the ingredients that leaders need to put in the same pot and create a team, a team that really believes in what they do. The thing that really move forward, considering what has changed. Automation and technology, operational efficiency, products, business and operational model disruption, investment in human and physical capital, reorganization and agility, shift to digital challenge channels, sorry, business dynamism. Everything is into act. 
So if you take any of these factors and try to apply in your organization, it's not going to work. You just need to create a comprehensive plan, a reorganization of your plan. I can challenge you that you can name probably 20 people of your companies that has a feeling of burnout, mainly those that are working in hospitals or in services. What is the new normal? Shift to remote working, but we are seeing the, that there are some limits there, that there are some challenges, probably in the way how we've been doing the remote working. That's interaction with your colleagues, with your, uh, with your, uh, with your company. It's not there. Before we, we I remember we, 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 we were teach and we were teaching how to manage to speak in public, how to manage the stage, how to manage, you know, the, the presentations, how to move from, from, in, you know, how to create that attention. <clears throat> now you can be. The, 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 the smartest people in the world doing that, but if you don't know how to share your screen, it looks like, a, mm. you know, it's like, a, oh, I'm not sure this, this person is going to give me a good, a good, uh, good income. Sorry, a good uh, input on this. That's happening. So the skills are different. How to manage <clears throat> the situation is different. Even how to build your day today. Those leaders that they see that oh, there is a recovery there. Here you can see that it's a moderate recovery in the global economy. These are answers from, from top uh, leaders in, in, in different companies. The graph could be, oh, you know, they are expecting that by last month. We were recovering. Yeah, that's happening. But you know the country who is recovering the most in annual comparison? Think in the country where the virus is coming from. China. They are announcing now the, the economic results, Q1. 2019, Q1, 2020, of course, Q1, 2019, sorry, Q1, 2020, Q1, 2021, 2020 was affected by, by the COVID, but the growth is going to more than 20%. So the economy is moving in one direction and then as a, as a, as a, as a whole is moving through, through the whole world. But it's good that at least most of the leaders are seeing that there is a moderate uh, uh, future, better future coming. Okay, and and these are basically it's a breakdown of the previous one, and so in developed economies and in emerging economies, those that they see that uh, it will be fully operational already. Uh, it to be more than in, in, in developed uh, company, uh, sorry, economies than, than, than in emerging. But most of them are moving in the same, in the same direction of recovery, of moving forward in terms of, 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 uh, of the economic crisis. This requires a new leadership style. This requires a way to manage the situation in the kind of replan and resume. We've been reacting. Some companies are replanning. Some companies are re replanning because, you know, the, the, the market has been changing dramatically overnight. Here is the key, how we are gonna resume because this situation is coming. Still, there are many uncertainties there, but we have we are, we are drawing the lines now. We're drawing the framework of the new economy for the next probably four to five years. What is the proposal? This is not new. Probably most of you, they know the golden cycle of uh, Simon Sinek. So I've taken this because to me it's, it's a model that could be uh, applied 
to any 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 time during the history of of of, uh, of the leadership before during and post covid but also before during and post the crisis of 2008 so the important thing here is what I'm doing. Probably most of the companies are doing the same. They're providing healthcare, are providing services, are providing, you know, retail. Uh, the question is how? How are I doing that? That has to change. There's been the changes in, in, in the way how we've been you know, performing, how we've been doing our job. And it still is changing. The starting point is, is the why. Why I'm doing what I'm doing. What are my values? And taking the, 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 the slide is, and not asking for the typical traits of a good leader. I want to know your experiences in how to do leadership. Let me give you an example. How I got my most precious bonus. So most of you know that uh, I, I left um, my previous organization. I'm still working for them, but in a different capacity. But I used to run uh, a hospital in, in Abu Dhabi, uh, a women and, and children hospital, which is basically, I mean, the name is Danat Al Murat. Most of you know that. And the last day that I was in Abu Dhabi, uh, because we took the decision to move to Madrid to, you know, for, to take care of our family and, you know, the COVID situation required us to be here. Here is Madrid. Okay. And uh, we were in the last, I think it was the last night before we were in a plane, me and my wife. And suddenly I got the call from one of my colleagues. Mr. Mariano, I want to see you. Okay, fine. He came with his family. That was my most precious one. He took his family to say thank you and to wish me well. I think that was one of the mine, <laughs> most precious ones. This is not happening because he's a good person or, or we are good friends. It's because we create a team. We create a team for three years, working together, pre-COVID, during COVID, and now in a different capacity on my side, post-COVID. We share the values, we share the why. And the why is our values and why we do things. In most companies, it's not changing. Pre, post, even during COVID. Of course, most of us has been thinking, okay, what, what am I gonna do now? It's a new style, uh, it's a leadership style. I can, I can say new, but we can even remove, it, remove the new. Trust. If I don't trust the people and the team we are working with, forget about that. There's no why, there's no how, there's no what. Cooperation. Cooperation means that not everyone is doing the same. <clears throat> it has to be a link, you know. Everything you need is in the in your in your place. And if it is not there, just bring it in. And take it as part of your or your or your or your team. Trust and cooperation. Trust and cooperation give you safety. I was reading an article uh, last week. And it said one of the most famous tech companies in the US, they were offering a contract for your life. No six months, no one year, no, no. You join the company, you join the organization, you can, you know, if, uh, until you want to retire. It's very successful. 
the turnover and the performance and the efficiency of the company is really, really good. But we need to set the tone and we need to sacrifice the number for the people or the people for the numbers. This is a false friends question. This is one of the most common words and phrase that you will listen, you will hear in any board of any organization. There was this uh, CEO that was asked to, to save $20 million in one year. And they, they give them the, the list of the people they need to send home. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ask everyone to take four weeks off. No payment, nothing. But they will do it when they want it, and they will do it at their own pace. He saves $25 million, and they keep all the employees. So we just need to to make things uh, happen in, in the way your company and your organization wants, which is thinking in why you do things, okay? Focusing processes, focusing the strength, and don't forget that your, your strength, your, your strength, the strongest point is your weakest, your weakest link. Just focus on that. Agility and adaptability, clear communication. The communication is moving from the why to the what, to the through the how to the what, knowing the other way around. This is very, very important. Okay. Emotional intelligence, something that is becoming more attractive now, more important than in, in, in the crisis situation. Intentional listening. So a good leader is defined, but the person who really listened, listened to you. No, the one who is just moving ahead, you know, this is the one that is really listening and gives you the opportunity to, to, to be with them. Okay. Focus on the values, focus on the why. Sorry. How to look beyond their own needs, how to, how the new leadership framework is based on changing and the weight of the same factors. This is very important. This is the environment. This is, this, is, this is the way, this is the key in terms of what do we need to do. We don't need to rethink everything. We just need to concentrate on why we do what we do. And with the team to understand what is the weight of the factors, the factors of what you do or how you do things and what you do things. Okay. Your services uh, could be adjusted in order to reduce the, the gap between the demand and the supply and the offering that you create. Uh, all this within a team, create your why. Here are some quotes of uh, top individuals and in MasterCard, you know, in the same, the same direction, General Motors, the German. All of them say in, involvement, improve the experience with your employees. Okay, we need leaders to who are approximate this is Netflix, one of the companies that must grow last year. Okay. Pfizer, problems are when aimed too low and we hit it. Uh, depends on how many uh, vaccines they need to produce, no? but uh, what, that's what they are doing. And I also wanted to include uh, Larry Fink, which is the CEO of BlackRock. BlackRock is one of the top uh, investment houses in, in the world. He doesn't matter. He just wants to say conscious capitalism can only occur if you have consciousness with your employees and your organization. It's employees and the organization or the organization and the employees. No, I want to have good employees to have good outcomes. I want to have good healthcare uh, employees to have good clinical outcomes. That is what is changing now. But it's not the real change, it's the weight of the factors that you are going to put first. Okay. So this is basically a way to do it. What do we do? Why do we do it? To be provocative, to adjust the how, the how we adjust the meetings before we were you know, here, before we were providing healthcare face-to-face -face with patients. 
now is different, but the process is different. Technology needs to come to improve our processes mm? in, in video conference, in video, sorry, in video um, consultations, in, in, in telemedicine. That's the how to be more efficient. Mm? And we'll never come from outside consultants or the latest management fact has to come with us, from us, and in our environment. Effective change will come from within the organization. That to me is essential and crucial. How quickly and how well we do this change, our company will recover. In three months, in six months, or in six years. That's, that's a, it's a model that, that you can, you can go through it if, if, if you think it makes sense. Um, this is a, it's a prediction of, depends how you do things, you will, you will get your new normal before or after. So, it needs to start from the top, definitely. Leadership development cannot be delegated. We need to take our responsibility. We need to use our responsibility. We cannot run from that. Executive must leverage passion and engagement in their missions. We are responsible for the why. No one is going to come to tell us this is your why. These are your values. The way how we do it could be bottom up, could be, but we are the one taking that responsibility. Okay. And I want to keep it here. Just one, just two, two minutes. Do I have two minutes, Dr. Alin? I cannot hear you, but I can see you, sir. You say yes. <laughs> yes, I said yes, you can. You have way more than two minutes. I put okay. myself on mute to uh, minimize interruption and interference. Good. Let me see if I can go to this. From the pandemic. Can you, can, you, can you see the video? The past year has tested us in unimaginable ways. From the pandemic to social injustice and natural disasters. It has presented insurmountable challenges. As leaders, it has humbled us. It has also brought us closer together. It has shown us how connected we are. It reminded us that we are part of something bigger. Healthcare leadership is more than a profession. It's a calling. And this year, each of you found the heart strength and tenacity to care for your patients despite the odds when circumstances looked bleak you set aside self-interest and collaborated to devise new solutions and reimagine paths forward as we forge ahead we mustn't forget the loss we have experienced the pain we feel for those we have lost and for those who bore witness to grief of a new magnitude we will all need more time to heal. As we stand together, let us lean on each other and care for those who cared for us during the darkest hours, extending our thanks to the heroes who held us up when the going got tough. There are victories to come, and one day we will celebrate them all. As we kick off this new day from all over the world, we know we're not alone in sharing a greater purpose. As we reflect on our profession and who we are as leaders, we are inspired by your determination, innovation, and humanity. We thank you for your resilience in the face of adversity, for putting others before yourself, for your kindness and compassion, and your ability to lead no matter how desperate times become. As we look to the future, we are inspired by the hope you have provided and the dreams now fueled knowing that the hearts of leaders are beating loudly. We are grateful for you. This is just a, a list of questions that I'm just sending to you. I'm not gonna go through it just for you. You know, once you get the, the presentation, do your checklist and see where you are in terms of your self-assessment. And I just want to thank you to 
uh, organizations and, and, and people have been helping me to, to be here today. Toraline, Tim, uh, Tana, everyone. Uh, people from Sesame Software is uh, the company who, who runs uh, HR Software, so they've been very helpful with me. Uh, the, the, the Spanish Association of Scientific and, and Researchers in, 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 in the UAE, which I'm a member of them. So they also been helping me and encouraging me to, to with the very good ideas for, for the presentation today. Uh, my consultant, which is a, a company who also provide video consultation and, and, and telemedicine. Uh, so Dr. Ibrahim has been very encouraging in, in terms of ideas and, and, and personal experience in, in, in the use of technology in these in this uncertain times. And of course, I'm the American College of Healthcare Equities and, 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 and a member since 2006. Always grateful to, to them and the, and the resources that they, they provide. And some references where you can find uh, reports and, and documents that I've been that I used have used to to create this presentation, and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mariano. A lot of um, good information and a lot of uh, visuals, and some of it was very touching. So thank you for that. Um, participants have been very interested they were so engaged no one asked any questions so let's try to open the floor now for questions or comments and um, kindly use uh, the raise hand option so we will all have time to ask questions or um, share our comments. I received the first comment from Ahmed. Thank you, Ahmed. It says, very informative. Thank you, sir. Uh, John, thank you. Great and efficient and effective workshop and webinar. So from the participants who are still with us, any questions or comments from anybody? All right, I do, maybe I can start with one. Uh, you did mention, uh, throughout your session, you did mention creativity and uh, creativity is indeed very important in leadership, specifically in times like now, where we need to, it's essential to be creative in order to manage teams remotely. And uh, it's only, creativity that would help leaders gain the trust and motivation of their team who are operating from different areas, different places, mm. and get their commitment. Because if those members, team members, are not committed, they're not driven by self-motivation, proximity is very far. So managing will be much tougher. I'm working with people behind screens. So if someone has their camera off and their uh, mic muted, I cannot communicate with them the same way if they were sitting in the same boardroom with me, but not looking me in the eye. I can gain their attention when we're in the same room, but when we mm. are in different places behind screens, it's tougher. So. I, I definitely support a lot and strongly believe that it's creativity that needs to reign now. So as leaders, we, fi we find those ways to instill this self-motivation, inspire our team to get them involved. So we don't end up as leaders needing to micromanage, but rather orchestrate the whole process. So what do you think? I agree. I agree. And, and uh, there's a lot of what you just said. Uh, and, um, some of the <clears throat> companies, they, they usually say, now I know you better than before uh, with, the, with the video conference. So I've never been to your house. Now I know how your office is, how your children look like because we're running in the back. 
So that's that's one thing. But but the important thing here is is that the skills and and the knowledge and really the skills that uh, a leader needs to use to manage and to assess those situations totally different. Totally different. Hundred percent. And and it's not that you don't see how the people walk in the room, uh, because that's very important. At least to me, you know, every time I was doing uh, a meeting, it's important where you sit, how you enter, how you you know how you behave with the others, how you greet the others. So it's it's, it's also very important. Give you a lot of information that probably change even the focus of the meeting. Here is different, but it is different, and I don't think. To be honest, I don't think it's coming to stay. It, it will stay, but, but probably not the, the percentage of, of, of the time that the, the number of video conferences and, and environments like this will, will be. Um, basically because the performance is not the same. The motivation is not the same. And, and that is where we need to wait from, from, from our perspective. As, as soon as we are controlling the, the reason of this pandemic, the new normal, which has a lot to do with the previous normal, okay, with the old normal, start raising up. And, and what is will change probably will be a mix you know there are conferences now that are uh, mixed online but also face to face so that is becoming again if re we really are happy with this environment we sh we don't even think about to to come to the face to face but we are and there are conferences now big conference that they are doing a mixed model okay so how to manage this transition and this situation is something that encourages the leaders to be more uh, comprehensive in their approach. But what is really important is the how you are going to measure that. How you are going to measure yeah, the performance of a person that you see only for one minute or five minutes in, in two weeks through a video conference. Probably the performance of price has to be different. Yeah, a lot of things need to change. Um, creating the balance with using what and when is definitely um, essential going forward. Uh, Dr. Rana, you had a question. Thank you, Mariano, for a very innovative and insightful presentation, extremely uh, mind-opening. I have a question regarding uh, the China recovery. And it was surprising to see that China is one of the uh, fastest recovering economies uh, post the pandemic. Uh, do you have any uh, reasons uh, what were the contributing factors for that recovery? And can we learn from them? Like, like using appreciative inquiry to, to translate this to, uh, to healthcare? Okay, so I, uh, well, China will give us four. <laughs> two or three more fully dedicated sessions. But, uh, but just, we just need to think in China before the November, December 2019, which is basically when the COVID mm -hmm. started. That's why it's called COVID-19. Uh, they were the, the backbone of the world. Most of the items, generally speaking, that yes, we use all and, around the yes. world has been produced there. The way how they manage the 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 pandemic uh, situation was very affected for what we know. Everyone knows that probably mm -hmm. there was something else that we don't know. But for what we know, lockdown was absolutely you know since day one, they were the first country, the first place where the situation came from. Probably they had they had more information than the rest of the country, and and probably they implemented the measures in a very much strong way than countries in Occident. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why the 
countries in the world, specifically the, the, the UAE, is being so successful with managing the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic is because they have decisions from the top to the bottom. And that's it. That's, I think, Regulated. is what happened. Yes, that is what happened in China. You go to Europe. We were discussing about AstraZeneca, Pfizer, what is better here and there. You have 2,000 opinions. And by the, the time that you make a decision, the problem is different. Mm -hmm. I think to be more direct is one of the factors that China has put in place very well. They've been focused in their economic recovery. And that's what is happening. Mm -hmm. For what very we know. For what we For know. What we know yeah. okay. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. Aline? Yeah, thank you again. Uh, we still have about three minutes. If any um, input or questions from the audience, everybody has been um, sending thank you messages, and they uh, they uh, found this session interesting. So we're glad you did. We have one question from Alex. Do you believe that rethinking or defining the why is something companies are considering. This may change their vision and mission. Well, uh, I think I think most of the companies they are doing this without knowing even that they they are doing. It. Those that they yeah. have. Uh, those that they have a clear idea of what they have to do. Of course, they started, you know, revisiting their values, revisiting their core, revisiting their core business, revisiting their why. And then it's a good start point. It's a good starting point. But just remove the pandemic. How many companies are doing this? We're doing this regularly. Very few. Exactly. Very few. Precisely. So why the pandemic has to change the situation? No, it's the pandemic increased the problems and increased the benefits. Increased the for stress. Some. Yeah, for some. But, but at the end, if, if you want to redefine or revisit, not redefine, but you, you want to revisit, or you have to revisit your, your values and your, your why, some companies say, mm, why, why do I need to do this? If I need to sell, I need to increase my bottom line. I need to, you know, yes, that's why. That's why you need to do that. So our, our role as leaders is to manage those situations, to manage the expectations of your employees, of your colleagues, and the board, and the, and the, and the, and the, the, the group of the people or the individuals that you report to. That is a key in order to move forward. If you don't manage the expectations and put the plan, Based on, you know, revisiting your values, revisiting your your the way how you do things, the visit the, what you do, it's going to be very very difficult and very tough. And if you are not one of the top companies, most probably you will you will die as a company, an organization. Um, Mariano, I would like to add a comment and hear your thoughts on that. Um, there was, of course, the um, economic crisis that went hand in hand with the pandemic, but let's keep that to the side. If we are talking about the companies, if we're comparing companies that were customer centered and by customer, I mean both internal and external customers versus companies that were more business centered. What do you say? Which one of them struggled most? Which type of company struggled most with the why and the impact of pandemic was stronger on or harsher on? I think if, if generally speaking, if you take care of your employees, you take care of the wealth of your company. If you just take care of the business, you probably will have a good business in one in, for one year, for two years, but but that's it. That's it. Uh, at the end, 
they, they said that the company looks like the, the, the CEOs or the leaders that they run the company and they have the same uh, profile in terms of personality. No? Uh, but yeah. at the end of the day, if you don't take care of your employees, if you don't take care of your companies, if you don't take care of their uh, success, the organization is just, you know, it's a matter of time. I agree. The problem with this is that most of the organizations are now private, private equity bank, uh, European funds, family offices, and, and the trigger of many of the decisions uh, have the influence of almost from a business-like proposal, if you like. So that's why the, the role of the leaders is, is more challenging because you need to manage that. You need to provide a good bottom line. And at the same time, you need to create that to, to, to take care of your employees. But if you do, you do this in the other way around, you take care of your employees, your bottom line will increase and there your, your, your board will be happy. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, 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 the, so the biggest investment company in the world, they manage the total uh, budget of three or four different countries in Europe. I'm not going to mention those. Just one company. Those companies, they have huge impact in what you do. You go to your day to day and you, you have economic pressures. The easy way, as I said during the presentation, is just to cut employees. If you take care of your employees, the bottom line will increase. Definitely. 100%. Agree. Well, once again, Brilliant session. Thank you very much.